restore and to give answers to every request and, and troubles in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't forget to hit the like button, share the link, remind your enemy, you know, call your enemy, amen. Let your enemy partake of this table, hallelujah. Bring your family members together and let's get blessed together, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you are great. You are great. You are a mighty woman. You are a mighty man. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 122, you know, the psalmist says, I was glad. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is a place of solution. The house of the Lord is a place of restoration. The house of the Lord is a place of healing. That's, I mean, that is why the man of God was so excited. The man of God was so, 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 so excited. If you understand that coming to the house of God alone, alone is enough. I'd like you to open your mouth this morning. Open your mouth and begin to thank this God who has done you so well. Maka parada Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Father, we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Psalm 118, verse 24, message translation. Psalm 118, verse 24, the Bible says, This day in which God has saved me, has God saved you? This day in which God has saved you. Our daddy will always tell us that you did not wake yourself. God woke you up. It's not because you know how to set the alarm. God woke you up. The grace of God found you just as you are. Empty-handed, but you are alive in your hands. In his hands. This is the day which God has saved me. It's the day which the Lord has made. Let us therefore rejoice. Lift up your hand and say, thank you, Lord, for saving me. 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 Thank you, Lord, for fighting those battles. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, King James Version. The Bible says, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit. i like us to open our mouth and commit the service into the hand of God, that the Spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God will rest upon everyone even as we serve today in the name of Jesus in your different units in your different departments in your different groups in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of the living God will envelop you in the name of Jesus the spirit of the living God will envelop you. Every department, the evangel voices, the greeters, the ushers, the media department, the, the spirit of the living God will envelop every one of us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Ah, Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24. Isaiah 65, verse 24, NIV. NIV. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, God has answered us. All these requests, they are, good, they are as good as done. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to lift up your hand with this assurance. <laughs> Say, Father, thank you because you have answered. Thank you because you have answered. In the name of Jesus, my testimony will be read here. In the name of Jesus, my testimony will be read here. In the name of Jesus, glory be to your holy name. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Yadaba Shata, I am next. I am next to testify. 
in Jesus mighty name we have prayed let's be upstanding as we take the national anthem God help us in this nation in the name of Jesus. May God help Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Psalms chapter 67. Psalm 67, I like to take 4 and 5. 67, 4 and 5. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people, the people righteously, and govern the nation upon the earth. 5. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. I'd like you to lift up your hand and let's praise this God. Let's just say thank you, Lord God Almighty. Because Nigeria, Nigeria is on your palm. Nigeria is in your hands. Nigeria is in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. No matter the negatives that is happening. All over, Lord God, we know that this nation, Nigeria, is in your hand in the name that is above every other name. And we will see it in Nigeria of our desires. We will see it in Nigeria in the name of Jesus, of our travails in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We exalt your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says when we pray according to his will, he hear it and he answer it us. Lift up your hand above your head. Jam them together for this God. Jam them together. Appreciate this God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is worthy to be praised. This morning, lift up your hands and give him praise. He's worthy. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now let's do this. See. Your love is overwhelming me. Oh. Your goodness does they carry me go. Everywhere I go, everywhere I turn, I see your faithfulness each day. This kind of love I never see, I never see. I sing it again. Your love is overwhelming me, oh. Jesus, your goodness does they carry me, go. Everywhere I turn, everywhere I see. I see your faithfulness to me. This kind of love I never see. I never see. Let's sing it. Say your love. Hey. Overwhelming me. Oh, Jesus. Your goodness. Just take care of me. Anywhere I go. Anywhere I come. Then I see your faithfulness to me. Hallelujah. One more time. Say your love. Your love. Hey. Overwhelm me. Overwhelm me. Overwhelm me. Hallelujah. Anywhere I turn. Anywhere I turn. I see your faithfulness. Each day. This kind of love I never see. Now let's sing to him. And we say, Jesus, oh. Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, 
Jesus, oh, your kind of love I never see. One more time. Hey, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh. This word is to be prayed. Jesus, oh. Overwhelming me, oh yeah. Your goodness does they carry me go everywhere I go, everywhere I turn. I see your faithfulness to me. This kind of love I never see, I never see. I sing it again. Oh, say your love is overwhelming me, oh Jesus. Say your goodness. Does they carry me go? Everywhere I go, everywhere I turn, I see your faithfulness each day. This kind of love I never see, I never see. Let me sing, say your love. Everybody, let me see you jump your hands and give you praise. Hey, my God is worthy. Hallelujah. Hey, Hallelujah. This worthy of our praise. We're going to do it again. Your love. Hey, let me sing. Say your love. It's over. His love, your goodness, just hey. carry me, just they carry me, go. Anywhere I go, anywhere I go, I, I see your faithfulness. Say, Jesus, this I love, I never see, hey. I never see. One more time, say your love, your love, hey. it's overwhelming, 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 your goodness, hey. just they carry me, they carry me. Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, the kind of love I never see. Hey, everybody say Jesus, Jesus, oh, this word is, Jesus, oh, yeah. Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, yeah. Jesus, oh, the kind of love I never see. That's why I sing. Is the way, Jesus is the light, Jesus is the resurrection and life. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the life, Jesus is the resurrection. I, I say, Live Jesus, live Jesus.
Jesus is the way, Jesus is the life, Jesus is the resurrection and life. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the life, Jesus is the resurrection. I'm Mr. Live Jesus, live Jesus. If you do nothing else for me, you are done in a hole. Nothing else for me today. You have done it all.
sound of victory. Alleluia, oh, Alleluia, oh. Let the sound of rejoicing fill the life fortified with the prayers and big daddy's sermon that means she she remained connected hallelujah i believe in jeremiah 33 verse 3 being our anchor scripture for the year 2024 and i have unwavering trust in god that he is already doing great and mighty things in our lives praise the lord is, is there someone here in this church hallelujah praise the lord shalom and keep winning beloved tremors hallelujah we serve the God of impossibilities. This year is our year of great and mighty things. And each time we share a testimony, it should start as, it should leave a mark in your heart that God is the God of impossibilities. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Are you in the church this morning? Hallelujah. Good morning, big mommy. Good morning, church. The Even Nation this morning, we're here to tell you that despite all you may be going through or all you have been through, one thing you should never do is to take your gaze of Jesus. Don't take your eyes off him. Keep on looking at him. Keep on holding on. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And when you behold him, he takes you from glory to glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
that you have enjoyed the service so far. My name is Jessica Oputa, and this is Church News. Who else has been having a great time with the leadership teaching series so far? During last week's Power for Living service, Reverend Kachi Asuha took a deeper dive into TREM's mission statement and core values. Here's a quick splash into last week's service. As TREMites, first, we are accountable to God. And now, I was just meditating over this session earlier this morning. And I, I, I went over this and I said, we're accountable to God. I said, but some people would say, well, but God is, God is high up there in heaven. God is in heaven. And God is in us, yes? And so, what is the physical thing so to say, I'm accountable to God? And the Holy Spirit said to me, you're accountable to the word. Because God and his word are one. So when we say you are accountable to God, that translates to meaning that you are accountable to the word. Whatever it is you are doing, if it does not derive its essence from the word of God, then you don't do it. Oh, I'm praying, I'm waiting on God to give me an answer. Whatever answer God will give to you will not be different from what is in his word. God cannot go against his word. 
I am sure that you won't miss this week's Power for Living service. As we continue with the leadership series themed DNA 2, Living Out Grace, we will be reviewing Big Daddy's seven new books. Remember, grace is not a buzzword, it's a lifestyle, and we will manifest that life as tremites to the glory of God. You are encouraged to join us on site in the Holy Habitation and online only if you cannot be physically present. 6 p.m. is the time. See you there. Please note that we will be taking the We Care offering today. Kindly package a good seed as we support the needy amongst us. God bless us as we do so. Amen. Our TREM headquarters monthly Friday fasting and prayers continues this Friday, 22nd of March, 2024. You can join us on site or online for prayers by 3 to 6 p.m. God bless you richly. Area 13 G12 Cell Churches invites every member to our first Zonal Fellowship for the year 2024 with the theme, Win a Soul for Jesus. It holds at number 2, Peter Ezeokonkwa Street, Aladura Estate, and Tony Village. Date, Saturday, 23rd of March, 2024. Time, 4 p.m. prompt. All Area 13 members residing in Antony, Mende, Maryland, Onigbongbo, and its clusters are encouraged to come along with at least one non tremant It will be a great time of fun, bonding, and soul winning for Jesus. The child dedication for this month holds on the 24th of March, 2024. Interested parents should log on to www.trem.org forward slash child dash dedication. Fill out the form and submit all the required documents online and a confirmation message will be sent to you. Our Good Friday service is barely two weeks away and we can't wait to reflect on Jesus the one who made the most precious sacrifice ever to mankind, with the theme, More Than Conquerors. Come and join us as we delve into the significance of Christ's death and celebrate the victory we have in Him. It will hold on Friday, March 29th, 2024. Time, 9 a.m. prompt. Venue, the Cathedral of His Glory. Trem International Headquarters, Bagada Expressway, Lagos. It's a service you cannot afford to miss. See you there. The TREM Headquarters Mature Singles Fellowship, now known as the Oasis Platform, is thrilled to announce our upcoming Hangout 2.0, themed Energized, happening on March 30th, 2024. Our goal is to create a vibrant atmosphere where mature singles can connect, share experiences, receive support and encouragement on their journey in Christ. It's going to be a lively and welcoming environment. Curious to learn more, reach out to Sister Julie Ute on 080-2300-1479 or Sister Kemi Esson on 070-5250-9888. Don't miss out on this opportunity to be a part of something special. Up from the grave, he arose. What a blessing it is to witness another Easter Sunday with the theme, Victorious. Join us as we adore and celebrate our King Jesus at this year's Easter Sunday service. Date, Sunday, March 31st, 2024. Time, 9 a.m. Venue, the Cathedral of His Glory, Trem International Headquarters. Make sure you do not come to this celebratory service alone. Bring your friends, family members, and neighbors as we celebrate the victory we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. 2024 is our year of great and mighty things, and the testimonies coming in are encouraging and faith-strengthening. Please don't keep your testimonies away. Share them with us via testimonies at trem.org so we can celebrate God's goodness with you. Thank you for listening. My name is Jessica Oputa. This week, declare to yourself, E that is in me is greater than E that is in the world. Enjoy the rest of the service and have a beautiful week ahead. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, Big Mommy. Good morning to every single one of us, and good morning to the online audience. 
Now it's Leadership Month and we're learning quite a lot about who we are as Tremites. One of the things that speaks to us as proud and living Tremites is that we are raised to live a kingdom life here on earth and we're also released to make formidable impact in our world for the kingdom. Jesus, all through his three and a half year ministry on earth, Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says that he went about doing good and healing those that were oppressed of the adversary. Now as a church, we are the extensions of his hands and his feet. And so, if we touch those around us, then it means Jesus has touched them, yes or yes. And so for us as a church and as a body that is responsible to our communities, one of our um, critical pillars that we stand with, if we remember topping, how many of us remember topping? Topping. Are we tremors in the house this morning? T stands for what? Technology, operational excellence, people and culture, international and integrated, next generation, and the second N is what? National transformation. So the National Transformation Directorate as a function of the Synod is mandated on a yearly basis for every TREM church across the world to do something that impacts the community. That is a major thrust for us. Can we join my hands together for our church? We are a responsible church. Praise the Lord. And so that's why in 2022, it was started on the account of Big Mommy's birthday. We had the very first Global Impact Day. How many of us remember that event? And so from then on, we've had the Global Impact Day last year, 2023, and this year, we're having another Global Impact Day. Now, there's a member of the National Transformation Directorate who is going to come to speak to us about what, as a church, the headquarter church, we want to do in 2024. And you will be blessed by listening, and it will also pique your interest to be a part of it. So do me a favor and receive with me this morning the person of Sister Bolowa Tife Erugbogo. Please clap for her as she comes. Keep clapping for her until you hear her voice. The microphone, the microphone, the microphone, the microphone. All right, keep clapping for her. Thank you. Um, good morning, church. Good morning, big mommy. Thank you so much for the opportunity to do this. I come here with great news, as has been said before. It's just months away from our annual impact day. And like we said before, this is a time as tremors that we take out to give back to our community. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Sustainable Development Goals. These are a set of goals, a global initiative to tackle pressing challenges that face our world. Now, as Tremite, as church, we are taxed with being agents of change and transformation. So to this end, the National Transformation has taken steps to align our efforts with the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, I'm excited to showcase two projects that will be showcased on the annual Impact Day in June. Now, the first project is, <laughs> next slide. Yeah, so the first project is going to be in alignment with Sustainable Development Goal 2 called Zero Hunger. And the idea is to create backyard gardens where we can farm our own food and also give the surplus to our communities. By teaching our community members how to grow their own produce, we're able to create sustainability for them and self-sufficiency. Like we usually say, we teach them how to fish instead of just giving them fish. So that's one of the major projects that we want to do today. If you can see some of the pictures, these are some of the plants that are grown in my own home. So like a wedu, we can see okra. These are things that we can do in our own backyards. We don't need such a large expanse of land to do that. And that's one of the projects we want to push for annual impact day. Now the second project is towards quality education. 
we have observed that certain schools are not equipped with the facilities to train our children in literacy. They don't have conducive library spaces, and some of them don't even have books. So the project towards this is to revamp libraries in schools. And through a book drive, we'll be able to equip them with the needed books to improve our children's literacy. The big idea is to someday have a community library where people from all ages can improve their literacy in the community. These are two major projects that we want to push for annual impact day. Thank you so much. You know, speaking about the backyard gardens, I grew up in Ibadan and my mom also is an agriculturist. And we had everything in our backyards. We planted cassava, we planted yams, we had ugu, we had um, scent leaves, we had curry leaves planted, we had pepper. We produced our own gari. Yes, we produced our own gari. So after planting the cassava, you harvest the cassava, you take it over to, you take it over to the mill where it's blended and ground and dried up. You bring it back home, you break it out, you fry the gari, and we sell the excess. So. If we're talking about Nigeria being a situation where we have a challenge with food security, then this addresses that. It also can mean for us as a church that we can have a farmer's market where the excess produce, none is wasted, and we have a big pool of food where everybody can come and buy these things at much cheaper rates as against having to depend on those in mile 12 and every part of the, you know, the country where they bring these things and it's more expensive. Now, talking about literacy, education. Without education, where are you going to go today? It's one of the things that's keeping us down as a people. So we need to drive up our literacy numbers. Now the question is, how many proud and living termites will sign up to help us achieve this? Our big daddy would always say, where there is no vision, the people perish. The Bible says that. But where there are no people, the vision will die. This vision is a powerful, compelling vision. But we need people to join hands with us as agents of change to make formidable impact in our world so right now the world for us is the communities around this headquarter church how many of us will join us can we see our hands people that will be part of this project and will run together so we'll have a very short meeting immediately after the service to this right end to this right side Please, we need as many of us that are committed to getting this work done. Vision interpreters, dream interpreters. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I didn't hear your amen. amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. And God also bless our National Transformation Directorate in Jesus' name. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Amen. And if you're not too tired this morning, can you just rise on your feet? And um, Amen. I'm going to read quickly. The book of Romans chapter 12 uh, from verse 1 to 2 it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, and His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let's just open our mouths this morning and just begin to pray in the prayer language of the Spirit. 
Let the Spirit give you all trance this morning. Let the Spirit give you all trance this morning. You see, sometimes when you get up and you look at all that is happening around, there is always a tendency that, you know, you go with the bandwagon. There's always a tendency that you begin to question even, you know, the very foundation of your faith. There's always a tendency that you begin to ask God, God, why is all these things happening? There are a lot of things happening in our world today that we, we probably do not have, you know, logical answers to. You know, no logical answers. No logical answers. No logical answers. But you know what? We are spirit beings. And the good thing that you and I have is that we have an advantage because we are spirit being. We have an advantage because we can control things in the realm of the spirit. We have an advantage because we can call things that be not as though they were. But our minds have to constantly be in tune with the spirit of God. Our minds have to constantly be in tune with what God expects of us. The scripture speaks about that which is his perfect will. There is a perfect will of God concerning you at such a time as this. There is a perfect will of God concerning Nigeria at such a time as this. Let the Holy Spirit give you utterance. Begin to pray in the prayer language of the Spirit. Le sakate lege bojada la zo pregede le shagada la breza dalaba le kapa le kapojada la boche bregede bojja talaga le patele bojagada la braga de setele le kapa talaba le brokoto le kapa shada le supragada la baba la se bregede bojja kadalaba la sapragada la baba sho bregede de bojja le so pregede bojja la la baba Makapala bregede bosha de de bosa la katala baba baba ba se bregede bosha le pala ba sa pragada ba shete la so bregede le bosha kata present yourself as a living sacrifice a le bosha kata le ge bosha le su pragada le shakata makare ga ba she de ge de bosha bregede bosa le katala bro shekete la sekede ba le bre la ba she de le bo La katala brege de bo shagada le supragada le bragade shagada la male brege de bo shakada la ba le brege de bo shakata la ba mama le gede de gede de bo shagade brege de bo sha le supragada la ba le katala ba 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 shede de le zokotolo brege de bo shagade de bo this is truly the way to worship god this is truly the way to worship god tell god that in spite of all that is happening Lord, all I seek is you. I present myself as a living sacrifice, Lord. I want to live for you alone. Hey, Shadala Baba, I don't want to be limited by the circumstances that try to weigh me down. I don't want to be limited by the seeming impossibilities around me. I refuse to be limited. In the name of Jesus, uh, I renew my mind today. I align myself with your will. In the name of Jesus, uh, Le kupra de shatalaga, le so pregede de bosha. I present myself unto you, Lord. Hey, none of me and all of you. Hey, le kaba shatalaba, because in you, in you, I live and work and have my being. Makatele bosha kata, ma brege de bosha kedele braga da baba, maka brege bosha dele. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just want you for one moment to just shut your minds. If I ask you today, <laughs> I'm sure if I ask each and every one of us to present prayer requests, there are myriads of prayer points. Sometimes it's not for you. Sometimes it's for your sister, your brother, your neighbor. Too many things, the vicissitudes of life all surround us. <laughs> but we know that which is God's perfect will concerning us. Bible says his thoughts for us are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us a hope and a future. First Corinthians 1 4 he says, I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. That's the distinguishing factor. That's what differentiates you from your neighbor. That's what differentiates you from every other person that is living in this Nigeria at such a time as this. His grace. 
is given to you in Christ Jesus. He says, for in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and knowledge. God does confirm in our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, do you not lack any spiritual gifts? Let's open our mouths and begin to pray in the prayer language of the Spirit. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. By virtue of what the grace that has been given unto you in Christ Jesus. Because you have been in Christ there. Because you have been in Christ there. Your testimony is different. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the prayer language of the Spirit. I don't care what that circumstance is saying. I don't care what that situation is saying. I don't care that phone call that you got before you come to church this morning. I need you to shut your mind off it for a moment. Exercise the authority that you have in Christ Jesus. That testimony is turning around for good. You are receiving a different phone call this morning. Because we receive, we believe only the report of the Lord. Can you hold hands with somebody this morning and push this prayer? I exercise, my, I exercise my authority in Christ Jesus. I walk in the dominion of my inheritance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Finally, can I give you a word of assurance this morning? Can I give you a word of assurance this morning? Verse 9 of the scripture says, God is faithful. Who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, it is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, mommy. Good morning, church. What an assurance we have in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, oh God. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Blessed are so.
devil tries to jump on your shoulder to tell you anything else and point you to all the challenges that are surrounding you remind him that God loves me recklessly God loves you lavishly he did not carefully pour out his love he lavished it upon you and that's why you can never be stranded that's why all things will work together for your good that's why head or tail you win that's why sickness cannot ravage your body because Jesus Jesus lavishly poured out his love for you you are the healed that the enemy wants to make sick you are the rich that he wants to lie to that you were poor you are the strong that he's lying to to suggest that you are weak because of the reckless love of Jesus thank him this morning appreciate him for his love you did nothing to earn it you did nothing to deserve it in Jesus awesome name we have worshiped amen Please, you may be seated. We thank God for his grace. We thank him for his mercies. Another time of corporate worship in his presence. In his presence. In his presence. It makes all the difference. 
continuing with the leadership month theme on dna to living out grace like the lyrics of the song that we sang and worshiped with i couldn't earn it i don't deserve it grace is not earned grace is not deserved grace is a gift grace is a person and this grace life is the kingdom life it is the life that we are being raised to live as tremites and so like we heard during church news and like i said last tuesday as i rounded off the service and that first session of teachings over the next few weeks we will be exploring taking a deep dive into this life of grace so that it's not what you hear it's what you live out and god through our father and the lord has released seven books to us he released these books in november 2022 all on grace all pointing us to the sacrifice of jesus and what that sacrifice has provided for us praise the lord so to start this sunday morning on the title the great exchange the great exchange i would not um i would not go into his teaching i wouldn't say anything more than that but i guarantee you that it will bless you receive with me this morning the ministry of the one and only reverend coyote odiaka please keep clapping for him until you hear his voice praise the lord mommy good morning ma you are highly revered and you're highly honored and my prayer has always been and will always be that when you come into this church god will exceed your expectation in the years, if God will keep you for the next 50 years, you will never regret knowing this God. Because he did not call you. You could have done some other things, but you decided to answer him. And he will honor you. Praise the name of the Lord. So everyone under the sound of my voice, you should be happy. Because you have a father, a father with a large heart. He is a very sincere man of God. I don't know about you. I had so many options. The enemy battered my life. I would trek from Festac to Iju, barefooted. The enemy messed me up. I was a graduate. But it doesn't mean whether you are a graduate or not. When the devil jump on your shoulder, he can mess you up. So, at the fullness of time, God said there is a church. And the name of the church is the Redeemed Evangelical Mission. When I came in, I didn't know my right or my left. I saw people that were not wearing head headwear, no scarf, no headgear to cover their head who are females. I said, no, these people are sinners. I will go back. I went back, and the Lord said to me, go back. And since after that, go back, my life has never been the same. Under this leadership, under the unction of the word that God spoke through the servant of God, my life has turned from one realm of glory to another realm of glory, and it's never the same. My prayer for everyone who has come to shelter under the anointing of God upon this servant of God is that you will align yourself and once you align yourself you will never regret your life I can bet my life and tell you that for free praise the name of the Lord so I don't know whether the choir can help us to sing what a marvelous thing he gave marvelous before we go into the teaching Uh, 
Halleluja. I will sing your praise for you've done such a marvelous thing for someone so wretched yet my soul you have redeemed no one else could do it no one could care half as much yeah. yet you've took my soul and so you gave your only son you gave that heart my plea you gave that I might be set free yes
so marvelous. Marvelous. When you delivered me. Marvelous. It was so marvelous. So marvelous. And then you changed me, Lord. you. What you have done cannot be undone in time. It has been perfected in eternity. And our life will reveal this glory. Father, we thank you. Lord, I hide myself behind the cross, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, the essence of what we are doing to ourselves is that Jesus will find expression through every vessel, every life, and everyone whether on site or online. That the exchange that you have done for us will not just end in the books, but we are going to leave it out. That is the essence of the journey we are embarking on. Holy Spirit, we totally surrender this series to you. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will do the exchange in every area that everyone under the sound of my voice needs that exchange. What you have paid for, what you died for, what you rose again for. None of us will fail to manifest it. No matter how long anyone under the sound of my voice has been carrying what you have paid for, that exchange will be perfected in this service today. And your name shall be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to read some, but let me just do a summary of what uh, we are going to look at. The aim of this session is to help us understand the importance of the death of Jesus to all humanity. That was why I told them to take that song. It captured the essence of what Jesus did for us. It was a marvelous thing he gave to us. And to help us to appreciate it, and appropriate the wholesome benefits made available by the glorious event that happened at the cross. To help us to reflect and appreciate our present status as beloved sons of God, our Father. Then, to intentionally align our daily living with the new reality we have in God. 
maximizing the benefits, especially as, this, as the clock winds down on the time left before the rapture. So if you look, if you have taken time to study the scripture, you will notice that in Acts chapter 15, verse 21, the Bible said that Moses had them. For Moses of old time had in every city them that preached him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. If you read the Amplified Translation, it says the writings of Moses. So this is one of the writings of our pastor. So it is not a mean thing for us to look at it. I remember when we were saddled with responsibility of handling the G12 uh, fellowship. Anytime Bishop preaches here, we convert it to our teaching manual. And when we sit down, it is then you now understand that a lot of people just had, but they have not really appropriated what he taught. It was when we were teaching a particular topic, living aggressively. People had it, they jumped up and down, but it did not go down. So that was why Acts 15, 21 told us that Moses had them that preached him every Sabbath. So what we are doing, we are aligning so that everything that is flowing from him will trickle down to us. Praise the name of the Lord. So my own lot is to take us through the journey into the great exchange. So I don't know whether you have heard before, we are told to come with this manual, this book. Mommy is a compliant officer. <laughs> she has complied. So we are supposed to be coming with our own copy. So if you have not gotten your own copy of the other series, when you are coming, come with your own copy. So that as we are talking, you will look at it. Then you will now understand that these things are written unto us so that we can profit from it. We can benefit from everything that it has to do with us. Praise the name of the Lord. When Reverend Kachi was teaching about the DNA, the vision, the mission, and the core values of TREM, there's something that just left with me in, from that teaching, the, 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 the vision statement. The vision statement, raising a people to live the kingdom life here on earth. If you are not living out grace, you are not living the kingdom life. And that is what these books are all about. This is just one of them. There are so many, seven of them, you can buy the entire seven copies for 10,000 naira. But maybe you don't have 10,000 naira today. You can start picking it one by one, 2,000 naira today. So when we are doing this week now, go and buy 2,000 naira own. So you find out that you eventually pay 14,000 naira. But you can go and take loan from Railbot Microfinance Bank, 10,000 naira, so that you will not be able to, you will not need to pay uh, 14,000 naira for what you should have bought for 10,000 naira. Praise, that's wisdom. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, so the first thing that you must understand, you must understand that to understand this book appropriately, you have to read Matthew chapter 27, the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 27, then the gospel according to St. John chapter 19. These two scriptures help us to understand and to capture the event that happened on that good Friday. Praise the name of the Lord. So the journey started with the crucifixion. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 53 from verse 4. It says, Surely he had borne our griefs. You will not carry any grief from this service. And carried our sorrows. Sorrow will not be identified with you again because of what Jesus Christ has done. Yet we did extreme him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Matthew chapter 27. I said read the entire chapter. But, but for the sake of this time, we are going to look at verse 46 to 47. 
Matthew 27, from verse 46 to 47. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, when they heard that, said, this man called for Elias. That is their understanding. John chapter 19, from verse 28 to 30. John chapter 19, from verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon his own, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So you see, the whole thing started with the crucifixion. The crucifixion happened by God intentionally making his own son to be our perfect sacrifice for sin. God had to exchange his own son because there was nothing and there was no man that could have brought salvation to mankind because there was nothing that could have been accepted before God as a perfect sacrifice for our sin. I don't need to bore us with how we came into that sin. We all knew how the sin came in. If you have not known it, maybe after the service, go to MIT. They will tell you how it happened. Reverend Ima, I mean Pastor Ima, just stand up so that he can identify you. So take them to MIT. Anyone that does not know how we came into the sin, please help him or her. Don't assume that everybody knows. But because of the time, the brevity of time, that is why I want to have to skip that aspect. You can meet him after the service. He will take you to MIT, and they will just quickly give you information on how the whole story started. But the truth of the matter is that men were doomed. We were doomed. And there was no hope, no future. And we were eternally doomed. And God needed for somebody to stand for man. And because of what happened, God put a primary you know, measure in place to preserve mankind. To ensure that the man that he wanted to, just like I have a vision for my son, that my son was going to take over my uh, company or my organization. Then I must ensure that the child that I'm planning that should take over is not destroyed before the time. So that is what God did by preserving us. So everything that they were doing in the Old Covenant, in the book of Leviticus, is just to ensure that man did not die before the time. Because there was a time that God has set in his own agenda that Jesus must come to rescue mankind from what the enemy has done. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is what brought about the crucifixion. If you look at that Matthew chapter 27, you will notice that there was a man, a thief, a notorious thief, that was exchanged for Christ. If you look at the name that was given to that man, the name is very significant. Barabbas, son of the father. Son of the father. And that actually is the real name of Jesus Christ. But because the original man that God created had gone into sin. So that is the Barabbas you are seeing. That man was symbolic of every other man. The Barabbas you see in the book of Matthew chapter 27. It was symbolic of every other man. All have sinned and come short. So the man was like a climax of the sin of the whole world. So he now, at the point of the exchange, the people demanded for Barabbas. Hey, how can just put up your imagination? They were looking. Somebody came, heal your sick, raise your dead, open blind eyes, open uh, deaf ears, did all those wonderful things before them. 
and they said you must crucify that person they said you must crucify that person so how does he grab you because god is working something for mankind because god is working something for mankind god created us he created us with an intention he created us to take charge of every other thing on this earth to be in charge on this earth but the enemy came to usurp the position that god gave to us and that was why god is a god of purpose plan objectivity and design god can never fail whenever he says something he brings it to pass the moment it comes out of his lips it's a done deal praise the name of the lord so that was why that man was symbolically exchanged for jesus everybody it's just like in the old testament from leviticus chapter 1 to verse 5 i mean chapter 5 you will notice that pres uh, the, the prescription of the kind of sin i mean sin offering they will take a lamb a goat or a cattle the one that you can afford you will bring it you lay hands on it the first thing the, the priest will do is to examine that animal, whether there is any blemish on the animal or not. So they examined Barabbas, and they noticed that he was a thief, a notorious one for that matter. And everybody put his hand on Barabbas and said, okay, free this Barabbas. Because Barabbas couldn't have paid for their sin. We wanted somebody that would pay for our sin. So they now say, okay, it's Jesus. So God moved in the heart of everybody, just symbolic of laying hands on that scapegoat that had no blemish. Barabbas had blemish. He couldn't have been the substitute. So the priest looked at it. He said, ah, but I've examined this man. There is no fault in him. The man had to wash his hand. Say, I'm free from your sin. I don't want to have anything to do with what you people are saying. I've examined this man. There is no, he brought him out two times. And at the end of the day, he succumbed to their demands. And immediately he succumbed to their demands. Jesus was touched. That's Koji. He describes. It's representative of the stripe for your healing. So if you are under the sound of my voice, my prayer before the Almighty God is that you will not carry any sickness in your body. Because that exchange has been perfected. That exchange has been perfected. God did not intend for you to carry anything. Don't believe that lie of the devil. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Look at the people of the old covenant. By mere saying that they are free, they are accepted, they can go about having no sense of sin. In them, their businesses were flourishing. They are thriving. They are succeeding. Simply because they brought that animal before the priest. And the, the priest approved that animal and sacrificed that animal for their sin. How much more? Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Who knew no sin? Who did no sin? Who did no wrong? They now brought in. So, if you don't understand what happened at the cross, you will not be able to appropriate the blessing of the cross. There is a blessing that flows from the cross. There is something beyond human understanding. Do you know that when you, there, is, there are some climbs, or some nations, where you buy a car, if the car is manufactured by Toyota, they will tell you, come and exchange the Toyota for another one. You pay some money. But you notice that that exchange is not perfect. Because after some time, that car will still get deteriorated. And at the end of the day, you will still come back again. It looks like the sacrifice of the Old Testament. But why did we call this one greatest exchange? We call it the greatest exchange because it is perfectly perfect, completely complete. You don't need to come back again. The same life you received the day you were born again, it becomes new every day. It's new every day. Become glorious every day until the day that Jesus will rapture us from this earth. That is the uniqueness 
about this great exchange. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beyond the greatness of this exchange, you will not, you also notice that the people that were doing it, look at the people that ganged themselves. There were some of them that were crying, crucify him, crucify him. Maybe Jairus' daughter may be, Jairus may be there. Among those people that were saying crucify him, Jairus may be there. The woman with the issue of blood may be there. The woman that was bent low may be there. There were so many, there are, even if they were not there, their families were there. Why can't they say that, ah, this man did this, this man did that because of this? Nobody was opposing the fact that they should crucify him. That was why the Bible says, if the prince of this world have known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What Jesus purchased for us by that singular act is much more than the evil that we did before he paid for us. So that is why he comes with benefits. Benefit that you can't even envisage. You can't even, that was why the, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7. See, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world, at times we call them principalities and powers. Beloved, if you really understand what Jesus did for us, you will enter territory. You will take territory for Jesus Christ. You will enter anywhere that you see that there is a soul that must be saved there. You will enter it bold because they bow to Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The next verse. Say, but as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear had, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God had prepared for them that love him. You know, as I was meditating, reading through this book, and as I was meditating, the Lord spoke to my heart. He said that the reason why we don't really appropriate the reality of the exchange that took place is because we are far away from God. Even though he's in us. It's just like you married a wife. No communication. No discussion. No fellowship. How can that marriage last? How can that marriage be enjoyable? How can you enjoy the benefit from that marriage? That is exactly. We, you know, he is the is our husband, Jesus. We are the bride. So he has married us the day we became born again. Praise the name of the Lord. So the challenge now, if, if you look at page 4, in Romans chapter 4, it drew our attention from verse 24. Say, but for us also, Romans chapter 4 from verse 24, I'm reading from page 4. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Praise the name of the Lord. He was raised for our justification. He paid the full price. He paid the full price. There is nothing that the enemy can hold against you. Nothing. Let me help you to understand why there is nothing. The sin that made us to be sinner, you are not the one that sinned it. Yes or yes? You are not the one that sinned it. Somebody sinned it and you inherited it. So the same way you inherited sin, you inherited righteousness. Praise God. The same way you inherited sin, you inherited righteousness. So why are you the day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you drop sin. Sin is no longer reckoned with you again. No. If you don't believe it, it will be difficult for you. Forget about the things that you go through. The mistakes you make, forget about it. That is why the antidote to those little, little mistakes is your fellowship with him. The antidote to those mistakes is your fellowship with him. When you fellowship with him, his, his person flows naturally through you. 
I remember I was reading Leviticus. I was saying all these things that God is saying, that if you want to marry, you don't marry that. Look at this specification. And I was asking the Holy Spirit, I said, how come? He said, the moment you believe and accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, he fulfills all those things for you. You will find out that he will help you to make a choice. Because the moment you are yielded to him, he helps you to make the right choice. Praise the name of the Lord. You will see it in the next chapter. Okay, let's just move on. In the next chapter, he said, you are the beloved son of your father. You are the beloved son of your father. This is a kind of a game changer. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 17, Matthew chapter 3 verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know, Daddy has helped us to understand that when you see son in the Bible, it's talking about both male and female gender. Because in the things of the spirit, there's neither male nor female. So when you see son, because there was a woman, an elderly woman, that became angry with God because there was no mention of women in the Bible. See, every time God is talking, he's talking about son, 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 son. So, the man that was trying to lead her to Christ had so much problem. He prayed. He would pray. He would go and do exegesis and break down the scripture before the woman. The woman did not accept Jesus. Each time the man talks, you see, he was expecting the man to say son and daughter. And each time the man talks, he also be mentioning son, son, son. The woman just lock up. Then one day the man was praying in his closet. And he said, God, why is it that... He said you should go and read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The last verse there. He said, I shall... See, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, no. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, not... Okay, he said, I will receive you unto me. Okay, it's chapter 6. I will receive you unto me. I shall be sons and daughters unto me. Say, okay, it's chapter 6. He said, flee all this unrighteousness. For each are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, which is your spirit. So he said, you shall be, and I will as receive you unto myself. And shall be sons and daughters unto me. Praise the name of the Lord. So, it immediately the man had that scripture, he now went to tell the woman, I have seen something in the Bible. You might say, you mean God talk about women in the Bible? So let not your case be like that. Daddy has told us. So son, when you hear son, I may not want to mention sons and daughters. When you hear son, just count yourself in as a woman. Praise the name of the Lord. So we not need to understand, immediately the father declared that this is my beloved son, with whom I were pleased. There is something about knowledge. The moment Jesus got to know that he is the son of the father. You remember Barabbas, son of the father. So immediately he knew that he is the son of the father. He confronted every challenge. From that moment, he was ready to confront every challenge. That was when the spirit drove him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And you, all know, you, you know, the moment he entered that territory, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible told us of what Jesus, he said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. If you look at what happened here, Jesus was actually hungry because he has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry. So he said, turn this stone to bread. And he responded, say, man shall not live by bread alone. Then you go to verse 7, verse 7. See, Jesus said unto it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So what is making him to be responding as like this? The reason is not far fetched is because he knew who he is. He is not confused about what the Father has made him. The Father has declared. I remember 
when my friends they were joking with my name they didn't understand the meaning of my name they were calling me odindi akara so and I, I was joking with them but one day i just decided to go and ask my father please tell me the meaning of this odiaka self let me know the meaning of this object immediately he told me that i am in the hand of god ah i went to the school from that moment i was jumping up in short i was so free i was not mindful of anything again i knew that any time any day i'm in the hand of god i wasn't born again then but that knowledge carried me even when i'm supposed to be destroyed god will show up for me what destroyed others who were so free entering jungle entry everywhere because i know that i'm in the hand of god can you imagine in the same way a child will know that he is safe and secure in the hand of the father or the mother so the child can attempt to jump attempt to do anything it is the same thing that jesus knew that drove him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and in the same temptation that all of us will go through in life first john chapter 2 verse 15 to 17 he said, he said love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lost thereof but he that doeth the will of god abided forever the enemy want to sweep you off your feet he wanted to sweep jesus off his feet the same thing he did to first adam the first adam goofed because there was no training there was no time that he was declared this is the, my beloved son but immediately the father declared to jesus this is my beloved son so he can confront anything the same thing is what you should arm yourself daddy has told us several days that you don't need to fight in this battle somebody has become victorious for you jesus Christ became victorious for you what he did he called us into banqueting table not warfare our warfare is accomplished somebody gave us the victory so we have the victory in jesus so we have to live out that victory knowing fully well that we are the beloved son of the father praise the name of the lord so you don't need to panic you don't need to to stress yourself all you need to understand that god has accepted you in the beloved ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 he has accepted us in the beloved so you don't need validation from any other thing say to the praise let's look at from verse 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace so living our grace wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved so what it's only god's validation that matters in your life they, you don't need any other validation they can tell you this this person is troublesome this person is this person is not their own but what is the what is the verdict of your father your father has accepted you the way you are so what he does he brings all to himself he gave us the holy spirit the holy spirit's duty is to allow that exchange to become a reality in our day-to-day -day living hello so what the holy spirit does we have been taught say god in creation jesus in redemption holy spirit in regeneration so what the holy spirit does is that if there is sickness in your body the holy spirit activates what jesus has done and cause that exchange to be effected even if it is kidney you are under the sound of my voice and your kidney is being queried jesus has paid for it all that jesus needs to do is you believe him once you believe him the holy spirit goes to work and effect the exchange oh god i wish that somebody is understanding in this service today i don't care how long you have been carrying that ailment it doesn't matter to god it doesn't matter to god 
All you need to do is to yield to the Holy Spirit. He is here even in this service. He is causing the exchange to be effected in our lives. The, the greatest event that happened to mankind is what happened at the cross. The moment the exchange took place, much more than what we did wrong, God gave us much more. Much more. We only disobeyed. You understand? We only disobeyed God by acting to the enemy. But much more, because the enemy does not even know that allowing us to be subjected to him is that we are coming out greater and better and bigger. It happened in the Old Testament. God was the one that orchestrated the movement of the people, his own people, to Egypt. Yes or yes? He orchestrated it. He took them there. So by the time they were coming out, they didn't come out empty. So no matter how long you are being garaged by the enemy, you are not coming out empty. You are coming out with great substance. So the only thing that God needs for you to understand is to understand that all you need to do is to yield to the Holy Spirit. He is the Lord now. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. He is the Lord now. He is the one doing the regeneration. He is the one causing the exchange to be effected in our lives. He is the one. So all you need to do, don't bother. There are some things in this life that want to challenge who you are. He said, if thou be the son of God, so if Jesus turns stone to bread, he will be the son of God. Hello? Is that when he's going to be the son of God? I have been named Coyote. I don't need to do any other thing to become Coyote. No, that's why I help myself. I, in the, my innermost consciousness, I tell myself, I'm Coyote Christ or the Aka. I tell myself, I, I tell myself, and it registered in me. So whenever I show up, Jesus shows up. I'm accepted in the beloved. If God has accepted me, nobody can reject me. Anything that rejects a child of God, that thing will dry up. Praise the name of the Lord. So God expects you to understand it. They say knowledge is strength. Eh? You also see in the book of Proverbs, chapter 24. A man of knowledge increases strength. So, the moment you know that you are the son of the father, it helps you to understand the reality of who you are. The only time that you see Jesus Christ address himself or address God as my God is when he took our sin upon himself. God is too pure of eye to behold iniquity. It was when he took that sin upon himself on the cross that the father turned his face away from him. That was when he cried, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. That was when he cried out, My God, my God, why had thou forsaken me? He was forsaken so that you would not be forsaken. He was rejected so that you would not be rejected. He was killed so that you would not be killed. He was afflicted with sickness so that you would not be afflicted with sickness. He was made poor so that you would not be poor. Beloved, if I have to drop anything in your spirit, let me drop this one. The mere fact that you don't have physical care does not mean that you are poor. Poverty is in the spirit. I've seen people that have millions and they can't even give 1,000 naira. That's a poor person. I've seen people that have billions and they find it difficult to release to humanity. That's poverty on its own. But look at Jesus Christ. He didn't bring physical cash, but it's the embodiment of riches. It's the embodiment of riches. That was why most of the time, the enemy will want to draw your attention to material things, things that you can easily see. Beloved, go back to 1 Corinthians 2, 8 again. 
verse 9. You see, say your eyes have not seen. You see, but as it is written, I have not seen. So you are loaded. Because you are the beloved of the Lord. Every wealth, every resource that Jesus owned belongs to you. And the moment you have that understanding, it's a matter of time. Jesus went through, he went through that temptation and he came out successful. Whatever you are going to, you are in the hand of the Father. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. He forsook him on the cross so that you will not be forsaken. He abandoned him on the cross so that you will not be abandoned. It's a matter of time. Jesus Christ stood his ground. Daddy has always told us, the battle you need to do is to stand your ground. So stand your ground. That's what Jesus did. Because he knew who he was. So he was not pulling punches about who, he, who I am. So the moment you know that you are the son of the father, is there any father that will abandon his own son? Look at Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 5. Say, let your conversion be without conversiousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Next verse. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I don't know whether it makes sense when you see the Lord is my helper. Then we will tell them the meaning. The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The Lord is our helper. We will not fear what the economy of Nigeria is saying. Because he knows how to bring abundance from scarcity. That is the God we serve. Where there is nothing, Jesus Christ brought something out of nothing. That is the God we serve. If God had to part the rest, he will part it for you. All he needs for you to know is that you have been accepted in the beloved. You are the son of the father. You are more precious to him. You are precious in his sight. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why you, you, you look at what he did. He said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Psalm 8. What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man? He said, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Beloved, everything is under your feet. Everything, is, because you are the son of the father, everything is under your feet. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything is under your feet. You know, the Bible says, even though we did not see the thing that was put under him, but we see Jesus. Hello? But we see Jesus. So the moment you can picture who did the exchange for you, Jesus. The moment you can picture it, you will begin to live out on what he has done for you. Praise the name of the Lord then it becomes difficult for the enemy to intimidate or harass you or stop you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, if you look at... I'm now in page 11. And in page 11, you look at Romans chapter 8. Verse 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. You see the language of people who understand their relationship. Jesus Christ understood the relationship between the Father and Himself, the Son and the Father. And He leveraged on that relationship. So He kept saying it I can of my own self do nothing. Whatever I see the Father do, that is what I do. I, I don't see the Father do. If you look at the lifestyle of Jesus, He lived a very prayerful life. If the, the father said, this is my beloved son, with whom I'm well pleased. This is where the enemy is trying to deceive many of us or most of us. I've said earlier that it is the place of fellowship and communion that the reality of who you are begins to emerge from you. 
begin to emerge from you. I've said it before now, and it bears repetition. I said, just give yourself an exercise and do it religiously. So we, we know we have needs. But most of the time, the need that the enemy fired in our mind is not what God wants to do for you. There are greater things that God wants to do for you. But you, you are focusing your attention on the apparent need that you are seeing. But God is looking, what is man that that art mindful of him? God wants to take you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. A land of abundance. But you are looking at, let me just do this business, let me just do that. And when God put money in your hand, you hold it back from God. You, pre, you, 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 you deny God of what the abundance he wants to do for you. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's very important for you to understand that the relationship can only be serviced by fellowship with him. Fellowship with his word. I said, do this exercise daily. Thank God for all that you are asking God for. But try and pray in tongues. When you worship him, pray in tongues for at least, maybe you are a, a beginner. Do it 15 minutes. If you do 15 minutes, I bet you, if you are consistent, nobody will tell you to move it to 30 minutes. There will be a time you now begin to enjoy that fellowship to the extent that one hour will be like one minute before you. And before you know it, every single thing that God wants you to achieve in life, you are achieving it without stress. So that is how to live out grace. And that is exactly what Jesus Christ. You can ask yourself, so Father has declared, this is my beloved son, which one? Then the Bible will not say he went into the mountain top and prayed all night. He said, I can of my own self do John chapter 5 from verse 19. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. Anything that man wants to do by himself, that is law. That is the arena where the enemy is limiting us. And when it's not coming to pass, you will think that the church is not working. It's not true. It's not the church that is not working. Praise the name of the Lord. So the, the bottom line is that God is interested in downloading the next level of your life to you in the place of fellowship. And that was exactly what Jesus did. He knew that all things were accomplished. John chapter 9, 19, from verse 29. He said, he knew that he said, now there was... John chapter 19, verse 28. 28. See, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I task. He knew because constantly he is not in confusion. They told Paul, they said they were going to, the person that owned this garden, they were going to bind him and do this. Say, I'm not only ready to die. I'm not only ready to be bound, I'm also ready to die. There comes a time that you will find out that your life is more precious to God than even than yourself. He will protect you. He will make sure that nothing touches you. Nothing. So that is actually what this exchange is seeking to achieve in our lives. So time will not permit me to go on, but on Tuesday, we will be rounding it up by the grace of God. If you can come physically, come physically. If you may not be able to come, my, I, my belief and my expectation from this ministration is that everything that Jesus Christ has exchanged for you, all the benefits that are supposed to accrue to you, you will, not, you will not leave one behind. This year, 2024, is our year of great and mighty things. If you are a diligent student of the Bible, you will see that even the Matthew chapter 27 that we read, you will see marvelous, marvelous, marvel, marvel. That's great and mighty things. Wondrous things, marvelous things. That is what...
as an individual, that you know that because of what Jesus did, you have read it in the Bible that Jesus did this, he did that. And it looks as if it's not manifesting in your life. The exchange will be perfected in your life this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are not leaving this place the same way. Whatever the enemy has denied you of, is it your own mindset that is denying you or depriving you of it? You are going to nullify it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, commit yourself into the hand of God. If God wants to keep you on this side, on this side of eternity for 100 years, your legs will carry you. Your health will not fail you. You will not live this life in, in sickness. You will not live this life in disease, in jams. The enemy is harassing you, intimidating you. He said you don't have any business. You don't have anything to do. Means of livelihood. As you go out this week, the way maker will make way for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. You are not going. You are going on behalf of Jesus Christ. You do not live unto yourself. You live unto him that died for you. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He has done that exchange on the cross of Calvary. What he has exchanged, you will not carry it again. He became poor so that through his poverty, we might be rich. Open your mouth and begin to take, take your, 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 your benefits. Everything that belongs to you, that the enemy wants to put on you, wants you to be living with it, reject it now. He's telling you, he, he, has, he has forsaken you because of you, the mistake, your flaws. It doesn't matter how long he has harassed or intimidated you. The lie of the devil, his mouth must be shut in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you. Jehovah, we bless your holy name. We adore you, King of glory. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed Redeemer, we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. There is so much, we may be seated. There is so much that we cannot finish today. My prayer is that God will keep us beyond Tuesday. And we'll gather together to go through it. By the time you understand what this great exchange is all about, you'll find out that you will live a victorious Christian life. You will live out grace, which is our DNA, which is our vision statement to raise a people that will live the kingdom life here on earth. You are not living kingdom life when you live in poverty. You are not living kingdom life when you live in sickness. You are not living kingdom life when you live with some ailment in your body. But I pray that before the end of this one, this great exchange, before we move into other series, you will live the fullness of the benefits that Jesus Christ has purchased for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, if you are here, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. If you are here under the sound of my voice, we are talking of great exchange. Something happened. Everyone under the sound of my voice, at a point in his or her life, allowed that exchange to be effected through his confession of Jesus as his Lord or her Lord and personal Savior. So if you are here and you have not at any point in your life made him the Lord of your life or accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you may just hear this as story. You may just attempt to appropriate the blessing. It will not flow. So the only thing that God expects of you, if you are here, I want to pray with you, I want to pray for you. So that that exchange can take place in your life immediately and begin to live out the benefits of that exchange. So anyone under the sound of my voice, you want, you want me to pray with you, to pray for you, so that Jesus Christ will take over your life and give you his own life. Is there any such person here? Ask your neighbor, has the change, has the exchange taking place in your life?
What is the response? Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's go to the communion table. Let's bring out our communion elements. Father, we thank you for these elements. You took bread and you blessed it. And bread became your body. And in the same vein, every element, the bread and the wine in our hands has become your body and your blood. Father, we receive your blessing. We activate your blessing. Everything that the exchange meant for us, as we take your body and your blood, we receive the benefits and we return all the glory unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. See, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that Christ Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread he took bread and he breaks it. He said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. As you take the body of our Lord Jesus this morning, you are reminding yourself of what he has already done. The body is not going to be broken today, the body was broken over 2,000 years ago. The body became activated in your life the day you accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior. And he is now reminding you, do this. So as you take this body into you today, whatever is left of you to manifest that exchange, the Lord God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will cause it to be actualized in you. So let's eat it and give thanks to God. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he has supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. What do you remember? You are heavily protected. The blood of Jesus Christ paved way for you. The blood of Jesus Christ preserve you. Preserve all that belongs to you. Preserve your children. Preserve you from every evil. Preserve you from the challenges of this present time. That when men are saying there's a casting down, your testimony there's a lifting up. So let's drink it and remember that it is done.
praise the Lord. It's offering time. It's offering time. Okay. I was meditating on the issue of offering. I've had a lot of things that a lot of people are throwing on the social media. And as I was meditating, the Lord said that from Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. It's the blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. If you are the owner of that Bible, underline that whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Beloved, there are things that are happening in heaven. If you are praying, heaven is taking record. If you are worshiping, heaven is taking record. If you are giving, heaven is taking record. I don't have time to show you scriptures. You remember Abel said the offering was still, the, the, after the man died, the offering was still crying. Dorcas, the offering that he, she gave brought her back to life. Are we together? So, if you are serving God, it's recorded in heaven. So all these things are things that we do while we are in this body that heaven is reckoning with. Beloved, if we told ourselves that he was made poor so that we can be rich, then there's a statement you make with what you are giving. There's a statement you make. Don't let anybody cajole you. Let the Holy Spirit help you. Because God wants to bless us. He wants to bless us. I say this with so much trembling. I, because I know what God has done. And I know what God can do. I am trembling as I'm telling us this. Because our mindset is that the economy of Nigeria is this, is that. Beloved, that is not your reality. Your reality is Jesus. There's an exchange that took place in your life. So now you want to now honor that God. You bring the worst that's in your pocket and you want to honor him. That's not honor. You yourself, you know. So let's package our offering. I don't want to take much of our time because the time is already running. Let's package our offering and let's lift it all before the almighty God. Say to yourself, my head will never lack honor. With my offering, I honor you. My head will never lack honor. I will never struggle in the land of the living. I have the mentality of the kingdom. I will live the kingdom life here on earth. The kingdom life talks about abundance. I will live in abundance. That is the life that Jesus Christ purchased for us. So, if you, so as you are giving it, you begin to live in abundance. Father, we thank you. Lord, we are grateful to you. We release, oh God, our seed. We thank you, Lord, because it will prosper in the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, because these hands will undo wealth. We will not struggle. No economy of any nation of the world will determine our reality. The economy of Jesus, the economy of heaven, will determine the extent to which we will profit in the land of the living. We will return all the glory unto you in Jesus' name.
the living Jesus. We have told ourselves before now that today is our we care. We care. Okay, so are we ready? We know what it is meant for. As long as we are on this side of eternity, there are some people that have not come to the fullness of the promises of God in their lives. So they may still be in need. Jesus Christ has identified such people and we must identify with them at this moment in time. I remember when I first came to the Redeemed Evangelical Mission, when the enemy battered my life, and all the people that were supporting me, they said, since you have decided to focus on God, they withdrew all their resources. And God began to tell brethren, give him this, give him that, give him that. That was how I was sustained. So today, it's not a big deal for me to support others. And that is why we call a situation like this, where we support those who are in need among us. So let us just bring out our offering and make sure it is something. You know, bread is 2,000 naira today. So if you are giving something that is below 2,000 naira, trust God that you'll be able to give 2,000 naira and above. So you can just tell yourself that this 2,000 naira can buy bread for somebody. Then let's have that consciousness in our minds. You understand? Just have that consciousness in your mind that whatever is worth putting food on somebody's table is what I am doing. Don't do anything that will not, you know, help somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember when we started, Daddy would say the minimum is 100 naira many years back. So today, we can't put that as minimum again. As long as God has prospered you, you can give 1 million naira give. Praise God. The account details are there on the screen. So let's quickly do it. Are we all ready? Father, we want to say thank you. Lord, we are grateful to you. You bless us to be a blessing. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that as we release into the lives of those who are in need among us, Father, you will prosper them. They will grow. They will be gainfully employed. And their needs shall be met. For everyone whose hand is reaching out to these ones, we declare they will never lack shoulders to lean on. Before they open their mouth to cry, heaven will respond supernaturally. We decree abundance in the house. In Jesus' mighty name, rejoice as we give.
Church. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Big Mommy. Today, my assignment here is very simple, and like every other Sunday, we welcome a very special set of people in our midst today. I'm pleased to welcome the first timers we have in our midst today. If today is your first time of worshiping with us on a beautiful Sunday morning like this. Please do well and come and join me here in front. Come with your bags, your Bibles, whatever you came to church with. Please come. Church, please give them a good God bless you. Clap for them as they come out. Show them that you love them and you're happy to have them in your midst today. And to our online audience, this is your first time of um, streaming live with us. You can click on the link in our comment section or reach out to, any, on, to us on any of our social media platforms. Church, keep clapping. Encourage them to come out. Keep, keep clapping. Keep clapping till they get here. Keep clapping. We still have people coming out. You're welcome. I'm happy to see your beautiful faces this beautiful Sunday morning. This is the Redeemed Evangelical Mission, popularly known as TREM. The set man of this house is our big daddy, who is not around now. He went out for an assignment, Bishop Mike Okonkwo. And our resident pastor, his beautiful wife, we call her the woman with the healing smile, our big mom. If you just look back, you see her smiling. She's all smiling now. <laughs> we shall peace upon call. Here in Trem, we are ardent believers in the word of God. And we believe that whatever the word cannot give you, Trem might one, it does not exist, and two, you don't need it. See, we believed that the word of God, we believe in the word of, in the undiluted word of God. Here in Trem, we give the Holy Spirit absolute liberty to take control. So, if you have a Bible believing church, I will enjoin that you join your hands with the man of God to grow your church. But, if you're looking for a place to call home, a place where the word of God is preached undiluted, like you heard the man of God preach this morning, and a place where the Holy Spirit is giving absolute liberty and Jesus' name is praised, like you saw during our praise and worship session. I would recommend this great garden of sense to you, the Redeemer Evangelical Mission. We would love to have you as one of our own. We would love to fellowship with you. We would love to commune with you. So um, I have one more thing for you, a gift from me and from the church, and that is a gift of prayer. Church, please stretch forth your hands and say a word of prayer over this Beautiful people we have here this morning. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for these ones you brought here today. We thank you that by virtue of them stepping into this place, their lives will turn around in the name of Jesus. We pray that the latter days shall be greater than the former in the name of Jesus. Just because they stepped their foot in trim, there shall be a transformation in their lives in the name of Jesus. Things will begun, begin to turn around for their good in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I've prayed. So you do me one more favor. If you look to your, my left and that's your right, you'll see our VVIP champion. He will take you to our chapel where you'll be warmly welcomed. Please do well to give us your correct information. We don't want to bug you. We just want to get to know you better and commune with you. So I welcome you once, twice, and a million times. We will love you and we're happy to have you in our midst. Thank you. You can follow him. Thank you. Let's celebrate them the more. Hallelujah. I join her to welcome all of you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Reverend Kayode. What a word. The great exchange. God has opened our eyes into it. And there's no how anyone online, on site will ever remain the same. I ask for more anointing upon your life. In the name of Jesus, let God use you mightily for his glory and his honor. 
And everyone says a big amen. amen. Glory. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to celebrate somebody, celebrate somebody good. Amen. Amen. Please listen to this. On the 7th of April, I'm going to have a meeting in, with enumerators, ushers, greeters, marshals, surveillance, and protocol. Just their leaders. The leader, assistant leaders, secretary, and treasurer. That's on the 7th of April. So please take note of it. Very, very important. Very important meeting. Very important. Thank you. Glory to God. Where is Brother Joseph? Ari. Ari. Glory to God. Let's celebrate Brother Joseph. He just turned 50. Long life is your portion. God will continue to use you. Let me tell you something. I'm sure she ne he never knew I'm going to mention this. They say part of solution he, and he, he does for us in this work. Am I right? There's something he has taken off our neck in the headquarters church. And I pray that God will also lead you the area to go. There's something. Very heavy something. He's been doing it over a year. God will bless you. God will never let you down. You will never lack. That area you're covering, God will continue to cover you. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. Long life is your portion. You will live. You will live. You will live as your days so shall your strength be. I bless you today. In Jesus' name. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. What am I saying in effect? God can be talking to you now to cover some areas for us. Please do that. You will not lose your reward. When I heard that he was the one, I was taken aback. There's so many things to be done. How many of you are fanning? You're fanning yourself. I see you, and some of us are carrying fan. You know why? We don't put a gen on the same time we usually put it on because of uh, diesel. Some of you can say, Mommy, I want it to be on at the usual time. I will supply diesel. God can lead you to do that. God can lead you to do And I know God is talking to somebody. Now, if you are the one after the service, come and meet me in my office. We want to be putting it on the usual time so that this place will be cool and not fanning. Um, I, I, I. Father, thank you for that person. In Jesus' name. Patience. Mwigwe, that's a lady. You are turning 50. Where is patience, Mwigwe? Hallelujah. Come on, come, 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 come. Let's continue to clap until she gets here. Don't run, don't run. Walk majestically. You are 50. Now, wow. This age is a number. You looked at it to me. Long life is your portion. God will continue to keep you from glory to glory. You will live long. The Lord will smile on you. As your days, so shall your strength be. I didn't hear better amen. amen. Everyone stand. Throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. I said something very vital. When are you going, young man?
today. Come, let me pray for you. My eyes is still on our prayer. Lord, thank you. You've already declared what it's going to be. And we trust you because you're not a man that you should lie. Neither the son of man that you should repent. You've gone before him to make every crooked way straight. I call you back. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Wave to him, wave to him, wave to him. Wave to him. Wave to him. Thank you for the great exchange. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. Your death, burial, and resurrection give it all to us. We will no more suffer, we will no more struggle. With this understanding, we are going to walk in the reality of what you've done. And we thank you for the answer. And everyone says amen. amen. This coming week, remember Tuesday is the date. And from glory to glory. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the soul fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us right now and forever. <laughs> All the days of our lives. You didn't say it well. Let's see it, say it from the beginning. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us right now and forever. Amen. Surely the goodness of God shall follow us. He's following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in the house of the Lord. And everyone in the house says, I begin. Have a lovely week. God bless you.